I tried. So I was reading this book on transpersonal hypnosis and there was a chapter in it about channeling. For those of you that might not know what channeling is, um, let me give you that definition. So when most people hear the word channeling, they immediately go into thinking of like the old lady psychic medium and they're having a seance and it's all dark and there's candles lit and she goes into this trance and rolls her eyes up in the back of her head and all of a sudden her voice changes, even maybe her accent changes. Most people think of that whenever you say the word channeling and that is a form of it. But evidently there are lots of different perspectives on it. One person will say it's this and another person will say it's something completely different. There's so many different beliefs and viewpoints on this thing that it's hard to get one definitive answer on what exactly channeling is. So today we're going to talk about what channeling is and all the different viewpoints on it. So I was actually reading this transpersonal hypnotherapy book and they have a section in there about channeling and they talk about this person named Jane Roberts and she was channeling this entity named Seth and for like 25 years together wrote all these books and the higher wisdom stuff is just it's out of this world pretty much yeah so some people you know might say it's a bunch of woo woo it's not real your mind's making that up okay another perspective is from the more religious people it's the devil it's satan it's you know you're summoning demons then there is the viewpoint of you know aliens extraterrestrials non-physical beings spirits wanting to get their message to the world that's another one so some different forms of channeling can be just your higher self it can be latent abilities that you are expressing that you didn't have before channeling can be it can be your spirit team it can be dreams your transpersonal self so your intuition your creativity and your higher aspects of yourself another form of channeling so there's the psychically where a psychic medium is channeling a discarnate entity being and some of them may not even be directly channeling they may be receiving the information telepathically they're just like more in tuned psychically to that kind of energy then there is you know all the clairs clairvoyance clairaudience claircognizance precognition we have all those ways then there is the libraries of information you can get aka the akashic records that's also another form of channeling it's just getting information and energy that is not in this reality and is not from normal conventional methods that's what channeling is then you have the full-on full-on you know channelers who go straight up into that trance and actually do let the entity take over and they are able to deliver the message so there are some things that you probably read that you didn't realize was a channeled book did you know the bible is channeled <laughs> yeah did you know that book the secret that's channeled so these next couple months weeks i'm gonna be talking about different well-known channeled works the reason why i'm wanting to talk about this is because i have been experiencing these this a lot of this type of phenomenon and so i've been doing a lot of research on it so i thought that i could tell you about it today i want to talk about the seth material the seth material is from this entity named seth and the woman that is being the channeler, her name is Jane Roberts. And a lot of people claim that the Seth material is what actually sparked the whole New Age movement, was a lot of the wisdom, the higher wisdom that he, you know, brought forth to humanity. So Jane Roberts was actually a teacher in New York and she was experimenting with some ESP work with her husband and that was back in the 1960s and i guess whenever they were messing around with this they actually made contact with this entity called seth and so seth 
you know, she let Seth channel through her. And from that, you know, over the span of 25 years until she died in 1986, they wrote a series of 15 books. All of those books, you know, they have sold over 5 million copies worldwide. It sparked the interest in channeled information. Seth described himself as an energy personality essence no longer focused on physical reality. So I want to read an excerpt from the book called The Nature of Personal Reality that is by this Seth entity. And yeah, I thought it was really relevant to what's going on today. This is his thoughts about health insurance and the fear of illness. He says, you are paying in advance for illness that you are certain will come your way. You are making all preparations in the present for a future of illness. You are betting upon disease and not health. This is the worst kind of natural hypnosis. And yet within your system, insurance is indeed a necessity because the belief in illness so pervades your mental atmosphere. Many become ill only after taking out such insurance. And I have actually thought about that too, about the whole insurance thing. I'm like, you know, that's kind of like saying that we know we're going to get sick. You know, that's just in case. Like, yeah, it's pretty. That is exactly what you're doing is betting on getting sick. I've always thought that, but then I read this and I thought, <laughs> I was finally, somebody put it into words <laughs> what I was thinking. So, yeah, many people become ill only after taking out such insurance. And for those, the act itself symbolically represents an acceptance of disease. Even more unfortunate are the special policies for the elderly that detail in advance all of the most stereotyped and distorted concepts about health and age. There is a great correlation between the kind of policies that people take out and the illnesses that they fall prey to. Generally speaking, those who advocate health foods or natural foods subscribe to some of the same overall beliefs held by your physicians. They believe that diseases are the result of exterior conditions. Moral values become attached to food, with some seen as good and some as bad. Symptoms appear and are quite directly considered to be the natural result of ingesting foods on the forbidden list. You are what you think, not what you eat. And to a large extent, what you think about what you eat is far more important. The best diet in the world, by anyone's standards, will not keep you healthy if you have a belief in illness. Your thoughts are reality. They directly affect your body. It seems that you are highly civilized people because you put your ill into hospitals where they can be cared for. What you do, of course, is to isolate a group of people who are filled with negative beliefs about illness. The contagion of beliefs spreads. Patients are obviously in hospitals because they are ill. The sick and their doctors both work on that principle. Women delivering children are placed in the same environment. This may seem very humane to you and yet the entire system is structured so that childbirth does not seem to be the result of health but of illness. Stimuli pertaining to health are effectively blocked in such organizations. The ill are gathered together and denied all of their normal and natural conditions including the compensating motivations that alone would sometimes be enough to restore health if given time. Your beliefs then are highly important in the way in which you handle the power of personal action. The use of your private energy brings you into intimate relationship with your own source of power. Yeah. Healing involves great natural aggressive thrusts of energy, growth, and the focus of vitality. The more powerless you feel, the less able you are to utilize your own healing abilities. You are then forced to project these outward upon a physician, a healer, or any outside agency. If your own belief in the physician works and you are cured of symptoms, you are physically relieved. And yet, your own belief in yourself may be further infringed upon. If you are making no effective efforts to handle your own problems, then the symptoms will simply reappear in a new fashion, and the same process will be reinitiated. So, yeah, those people that, you know, they're just like, I keep getting sick over and over, and it's <laughs> those 
you know, people that are just sick their whole lives, well, maybe it's not your environment. Maybe it's something inside that you need to fix. And once you fix that, all the rest will fall in line. You may lose faith in your doctor while still retaining confidence in doctors as a whole and run from one to another. But the body has its own integrity. An illness is often simply a natural sign of imbalance, a physical message to which you are to listen and make inner adjustments accordingly. When these realignments are always made from the outside, the body's innate coherence becomes jeopardized and its intimate relationship with mind is confused. More, its natural healing powers are dulled. The built-in initiating rigors of reactions that are meant to follow inner stimuli are activated instead by exterior means. The individual's faith is transferred more and more to an outside agency. This usually means that no time is allowed for necessary inner dialogues or self-questioning. And the self-healing that might otherwise occur is brought about through belief in another. Because we have the power, guys. We are the ones in control. We are so powerful beyond measure. You have no idea. The point of power, again, is in the present. When your non-physical self merges with the corporal reality, the, re the recognition of that fact alone can revitalize your life, guys. In your terms, you are in a state of evolution as a species. Part of this experience includes a natural fascination with exterior events. You are developing properties of consciousness that are in their own way uniquely your own, as your environment is. A strong focus is a necessary counterpart, since you are involved in a learning process in which all elements inherent in the situation will be explored. Throughout this venture, however, you are in the dream state, always kept in touch with the realities from which your physical experience springs. As you understand time, you will eventually be able to merge your inner comprehension with your physical self and form your world on a conscious basis. Such manuscripts as mine are meant to help you do precisely that. So, this really hit home because, guys, that's what hypnosis is. <laughs> Through hypnosis, we are going inward and figuring out what's wrong inside there and we are manifesting it into our physical. That is exactly what hypnosis is. It's just being able to go inside. So I really agree with all this 100%. It's so true. And some of you that might not, one day this will make complete sense. Until then, keep doing what you're doing because you're doing just fine. You're on your own journey and everyone's on their own journey. Everyone is on their own little level. And that doesn't make anyone better than the other. It's just one experience over another. There's nothing wrong with that. Take what you want from this, but I'm gonna be talking about channeling a lot more because I feel like I need to. I'm gonna be telling a lot about some of my experiences also. So anyways, guys, that's all I have for today. Love and light to you all. Oh, 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 oh,